Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Keith. Happy Monday. What's happening? Yeah, well, I have a fun little challenge with relationships and extracts and joins and live connections and performance. Sounds messy. Uh, messy, but curious and okay. reveal some different behavior around extracts. Uh, versus um live connections and relationships versus joins okay and it, and it's all about uh performance yep and different the same views taking different amount of time to render okay yep so on my screen here i have uh the two data sources that were set up and this was a, a problem somebody had on the tableau forums um that I helped out with. So here we have two data sets. Um, so it's the same raw data, um, one with relationships. So the noodle up here on top, joined mm -hmm. down here on the right. Just visually, we can see there's kind of the same number of tables in both places. Um, here with relationships, each logical table just has one physical table in it. Okay. Um, and then in the joins, we're seeing just one screen here. So this is all of our, our physical tables joined into one logical table mm -hmm. from a relationships perspective. Kind of the way we um, would have done things in the past without relationships. Correct. Yep. So, and there's different file types here and everything. So we're not necessarily mm -hmm. going to get all the benefits of things like join calling and everything that joins can do. Um, Right. So these are, uh, these are um, a bunch of federated joins. They're not all happening inside of the database. Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. So with performance kind of laid it out here, there's different, I've ranked the performances from fastest number one to slowest number four, and then how the data source was built. So the fastest was a join on an extract, a join the join source on an extract. Okay. Number two was relationship on an extract. Number three was relationship with live. Number four was join with live. Okay. So it makes sense. The two extracts are the fastest and the two lives are the slowest. Well, there's a question of like, what is, what is making these extracts faster in this case? Mm -hmm. And then this kind of other difference or why are relationships sometimes faster than joins in the live, but then slower in the extract. So we're going to go through both of those questions. Right, that's curious. Look, the joins have been sandwiched, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're like either the fastest or the slowest, and the relationships are in the middle. Yep. Yes. Okay. So to talk about the extracts being faster, we can hopefully talk about this fairly quickly. Um, and I also want to be clear: this is for this use case that, depending on your data source and different things going on. You may experience something different, but in understanding why this is happening in this use case, we can hopefully illuminate other use cases. Right, totally. Every topology is different, right? Every environment is going to be a little bit yep. um, unique. Okay. Yep. So, so the first thing to call out here is this is this extract was built using the default logical table setting with one logical table. So we'll talk about what that means in a little more detail. Okay. Um, so let's talk about this live connection versus extract for this particular use case, because there's a lot of differences we could talk about. Um, so with our live connection, our data is located in, in whatever sources, local files and so on. Tableau is using the right drivers to connect to that data. And as much as possible, Tableau is going to run queries on that data whenever the viz refreshes, or sometimes I use the term runtime to say that. Um, so it's having to do this round trip out to the data source to run that query and pull data back. Um, so the speed of the source and that network connection matters here. Um, and if there are multiple connections, then 
Tableau may be able to push information into the remote source to do a join um, or do the relationship out there, or it'll bring the data back and then do a join locally. So that's that's an influence on performance okay. in this case. Now going to extracts, so our data is being copied from our original source into the extract, and this is compressed and indexed and goes through all sorts of optimizations for analytical queries. And the data is now effectively local to Tableau. Right, we're not going back and forth across the network. Yep. And this can often be a huge performance increase mm -hmm. right there. Um, and then here's this other impact. So Tableau has that default logical tables option for extracts. So what it's going to do is take all those physical tables that are there together and join them all into one logical table. So all of those joins are pre-computed in the extract and don't have to be done at runtime the way they would in a live connection. Right, but I remember from your earlier slide, in this case, every logical table is just a single table and you have a relationship between a bunch of single tables. You're not actually doing any yes. pre-joins at, at the yes. moment. But that does make extracts so, faster in other cases where you can club multiple joins together into a single logical table. That join computation will happen when the extract runs and it'll extract that, that clubbed together logical table as a single unit. Yep. And this goes to the the differences here for performance. So to look at these two data sources in that relationships data source, um, all the relationships for the view are being computed when the viz is refreshed. And this doesn't matter whether it's extract or it's live. That's, that's how relationships work. With the join source for this use case, all our joins are in a single logical table. We're using that default logical table setting so our extract is one flat table um, with all of those joins pre-computed. Mm -hmm. And so when you say the default logical table setting, what you mean is we're extracting logical tables by default instead of extracting physical tables by default, or instead of having toggled that setting to extract the physical tables instead of the logical ones. Correct. Yep. Okay, and, and so now as a result of that, um, the extract in the old traditional static join source is just one big flat table with all of the joins having been pre-computed in advance. Yes. Okay. Yep. And so when that happens, that single extract with all of those joins pre-computed, you don't have that overhead of doing any, any sort of join or relationship mm -hmm. computation at runtime, it can end up being faster. Mm-hmm. So that's the piece that's making the joins faster than the relationship in the extract. That's what, that's what makes that scenario win in the end. That's, that's the fastest because everything's been done in advance, right? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So now let's talk about that relationship versus join okay. variation. Um, so just to review some, some differences here for this use case. So then relationships, like I said, those are computer to viz refresh. Um, and one of the ways I think about relationships is it's kind of an aggregate then join order of operations in a way. So right. within relationships, we're carrying each logical table at the level of the fields used in the view and our relationship fields. And we're only querying what we need and then we're going to join them together. Right. So that's kind of um, like data blendings were the first pass at this. We've talked about this where, mm -hmm. where relationships are taking that initial intention of data blending and just making it better where it, it's a post aggregate join where we do aggregate queries and then we join the, the, the limited result of those aggregate queries instead of doing a record level join of everything. Yes. Yep then it's relationships gives us a little more flexibility in how we're, we're building that. So with, um, to sort of have a joins, just as the, the comparison here. So with a live connection, those joins are going to be computed if it's refresh. And mm -hmm. in the extract, if we're using the logical table setting, those joins are all pre-computed for us. Otherwise they're computed if it's refresh if we're using physical tables. 
So now already I can see why the joins are slowest on the live because that's happening at runtime while the, you're, mm -hmm. you're performing all those joins while the, while the audience is waiting to read the newspaper. Yep. And then for the next piece of this as to why the joins are slower is that with joins, it's kind of this join then aggregate order of operations. So flipping mm -hmm. it around where the join is at the level of individual rows and also depending on their data sources and the referential integrity settings, um, Tableau may need to query across all of our tables at once mm -hmm. to hand us that, that data set, um, which can end up being a lot more work. Because of the uh, sequence in which things are done by, by doing all of that record level joining and then aggregating, that's a lot heavier of a lift. Yes. Okay. So to kind of go through a scenario of this with our, our two sources here. So let's say our, our crowdsourcing data, this one on the left has 10 million rows and has the month field. And then we've got an admin division table, which is this top one here. Let's say just that has a hundred rows we're connected on some field that's identifying the admin division for each row. And each crowdsourcing row has one and only one admin division row. So it's just giving us some extra information about our data. Um, so then in our Tableau view, let's say we want to view with month and our admin division. So we've got to connect these two tables to render our view. So let's say we have 12 months of data, we've got 100 admin divisions, so it'd be 1,200 marks for one year's worth of data. So I'm doing a little math here to help highlight the differences between our different outcomes. So we have live connection and extract. And then for relationships in the live connection, we're going to do this um, aggregate then join. So we're going to query our crowdsourcing data at the level of month and admin division and get 1,200 rows. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to query our admin division at the level of admin division, get 100 rows and join those together. So there's 1,200 join operations happening to build out our view. So we're joining 100, 100 to 1,200 and the 1,200 is this limited subset. Yep. So we've already limited our data here. And in the extract, Tableau's extracting each of our logical tables. And then the query that it's issuing on that extract is effectively the same as our relationship live connection. So no real difference there, but we do pick up some speed because in this case, because it's an extract. Right, because with the all those optimizations. Yep. So, so this sends it. So the extracted relationship runs faster than the live connection relationship in mm -hmm. this case. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the join. Okay. In the live connection, we've got, we're going to join our crowdsourcing and admin data. So we have 10 million rows that we're joining because mm. joins are at row level. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to aggregate that to our, the 1200 rows in the view. So instead of, this kind of 1,200 joint operations in the mm -hmm. relationship live connection, we have 10 million. We're joining on all 10 million and then doing all the computation to aggregate the, the to this aggregate. huge 10 million number. Yeah. yeah. So okay. that is pretty obviously going to be slower. Right. Um, and then in the extract case, um, given the, the one logical table here we have in our extract, and using the logical table setting and in, in creating the extract, all of those joins are pre-computed. Right. So all that stuff still happens, but it happened in the middle of the night when the extract ran and nobody needs exactly. to notice. Right. Okay. Yep. And then the query at this point is at the level of month and admin division. And so it's pulling those 1200 rows super fast. Mm -hmm. Because it's a, it's a very narrow data. query against a, a 10 million record extract, which is not that bad. So in our, our timing here, we end up with this being number one, fastest, join and extract. Okay. The relationship and extract has the performance optimizations of a relationship with the performance optimizations of an extract mm -hmm. and is the second fastest. Mm -hmm. And then the live connection relationship is third fastest. And then finally, the live connection join that has to do all this extra work at a row level ends up being number four and is in the slowest position. 
Okay, so the difference between number three and number four really comes down to the fact that that the relationships are uh, aggregate then join, whereas the joins are join then aggregate, and that really differentiates how they perform on a live connection. Yes, got it. Oh, and highlights one of the 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 what I see as a big advantage of relationships is we get that. Um, that's, I think of it as kind of simpler, but basically where Tableau has to process fewer rows um, operation that we get with data blends, but then we have the, this is a row level operation, unlike blends that are an aggregate operation that add a lot of complexity to building views. So that's really interesting. I've, this is my first time observing that the relationships make things more efficient not just for us as authors and data modelers and designers, but it makes things more efficient for the system and the computation as well in certain cases. Yes. Yep. Wow. Thanks for showing me that. Yeah. So with that, just to kind of talk about takeaways and the, the first point here is your mileage will vary. Yeah. Um, and so performance tuning in Tableau is there's, it's a, it's in that place of it. It's there's science behind it, but there's so much complexity. There's an art to it because there's mm -hmm. a lot of variables. Mm -hmm. So we have the way our data is set up. Um, so your data may be different from the data I was just talking about. Um, there's also this place of the, um, the cardinality of our relationships between different tables and what we might end up with replication and so on. There's also the speed of the systems that we're working with, mm -hmm. um, or in cases, the availability of resources to make those systems faster. So for example, mm -hmm. there's databases I've worked with where there's not really a, the DBAs don't have time to really spend time optimizing that to make yeah, it faster. Yeah, they can't, they can't answer your service request to build you a view that runs faster. Mm -hmm. They don't have time. Yeah. 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 Or there's memory constraints or something like that, mm -hmm. um, that are on those systems. Um, and then we can just go on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. And talk right. about this. Yeah. A lot Every of topology is going to have its own, its own yeah. world of, of complexity. Yeah. Yeah. So on this, the, the kind of key reference for this is, uh, the designing efficient workbooks white paper, and we'll put a link to this in the. Um, yeah, you know, I uh, haven't minutes. I haven't read it yet, but I understand they just redid that white paper, and Alan Eldridge's had been yes. sort of sitting stale for a little while, and um, I hear it's very good that they've really gone and and kind of revamped his work and presented it all with more modern uh, information um, as well as an easier to digest format. Yep. Yeah, so it's been so I've read a little bit of it. I still need to to dive into it more to see, totally. see what I've seen. But it's um by a couple of people from Innerworks whose um name I can't remember, but I really appreciate them for yes, spending their time on that. it to update yeah. it for and really thank for you for the day. for the prod here because I need to go read that. Uh, to me, that designing efficiency work paper is a must read for every Tableau developer. You just you just need to be developing mm -hmm. for performance because to go back and try to fix something that doesn't perform well is a little bit too late. Um, mm -hmm. the, the performance happens at at the design and build time, um, and so it's a must read. Uh, and thank you for reminding me that it's been updated. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's mm -hmm. super curious the way that that the performance varies. Um, and thank you for laying it out like that. It makes it really easy to understand. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, All right. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Yep.